Hello, my World Culture friends. That's right, it is I, Simon Miller, and I am bringing you the news today. <laughs> I'm editing the video as well, because as we know, we are in the middle between Christmas and New Year. We're in that strange period that does come every single 12 months, and rightfully so, the What Culture Wrestling crew are having a rest. So they said, Simon, will you report on any happenings? And I said, I bet your ass. And we are going to start with CM Punk, because of course we're going to start with CM Punk. It could be the year 2072, and people would still want to talk about CM Punk. And as we have arrived here, I'm going to be that guy and remind you, never forget that wrestlers are human beings, and we don't know what they're going through, if they're happy pandas or sand pandas. Let's always try and show them some respect. However, on his brand new FTR podcast, Dax Harwood had a little bit of a conversation about his relationship and friendship with CM Punk, and he said this, Punk was still so joyous and happy to be in the wrestling business. To be honest, he told me when they were going to put the belt on him that he didn't want the belt. He said, I just want to have fun, like Cindy Lauper. I added that bit in. But he understood that Tony putting the belt on him would put AEW in a better light. He took it begrudgingly and a little bit, but he took the belt. So all of a sudden, everyone is going crazy about this news. And as Dax actually talks about when he goes into all the fallout from All Out, Sometimes you're going to get a version of the truth and there'll be different versions of the truth and you'll think one truth and somebody else think another truth. We all just have to hear the different facts and come to our own opinion. But I can see that being a reality. I can see that being true. Maybe CM Punk was perfectly happy just floating along, being the returning legend and realise, oh man, if I become the AEW World Champion, that comes with responsibility, that comes with power. So he's basically becoming Spider-Man. And maybe that's why all of a sudden he did start thinking to himself, well, I don't like what this person is doing. I don't like what that person is doing. Whether he was right or wrong, we do not know because he felt like as he had gold over his shoulder and around his waist, he had to put more oomph into the company itself and make sure it's operating on a correct level. Dax would even go on to talk about how Punk was backstage and said he would go out of his way to give people's gifts and always have his ear open should you want to go talk to him. But he also said this about the whole, you know, Kenny Omega and the Elite and CM Punk situation. I can tell you what I hope because I don't know. Everyone knows about the legalities of the situation and no one is really expressing what is going to happen, what has happened and what won't happen. I can tell you all I can be truthful about. I can only tell you what I know and what I perceive to know. I hope that he comes back. I feel that AEW should have the Young Bucks in their locker room. AEW should have Kenny Omega in their locker room. I know that I feel AEW should have CM Punk in the locker room. Because with those four entities, it makes our talent roster so much deeper and better. So this is my plea for all four guys. Please find a way to make it work. If we can make it work, we can set up the future of professional wrestling for a long time. We can change the course of professional wrestling for a very long time. So there you have it. Now you know the deal and I shall give you my two cents whether you want it or not. And once again, I just want to reiterate, we do not know where anybody's head is at the moment. And as a individual of this earth, you've got to be in a good headspace. That's the most important thing in the world. And I'm saying that to you out there in internet land as well. But of course, from a wrestling fan's perspective, do I want to see CM Punk back in AEW? Of course I do. Do I want to see Kenny Omega keep smashing it? Yes. The Young Bucks, yes. Hangman Adam Page, yes. I don't have to worry about the little things that may or may not be going on backstage. These are professional wrestlers that I can watch on Wednesdays and Fridays or wherever the hell they're booked on pay-per-views, premium live events, and be like, oh my gosh, they're so good. They tell such good stories. They do flippy dippy doodah moves. You want to have the best possible roster that you can have. And while some people are going to deny it and say otherwise, from my very, very ridiculous opinion, I think CM Punk absolutely ticks that box. I think his year run he had back with All Elite Wrestling was pretty damn incredible, and we'd only just touched the surface. I'm not going to sit here and run through a bunch of guys that he wasn't able to have feuds with, but there are a ton. You could literally do like 15. There's 15 different people, and I bet every one he could do something different. And maybe it's a situation where if we can all get back on the same page, just say, hey, Punk is a star attraction. Punk is like a special doodah who turns up here and there, but we're not going to make him a champion. And we're not going to build this whole thing around him. He's just going to be someone we put on a pedestal and we see how it goes from there. So the that, Dax Howard podcast, I believe, comes out on the 29th or the 30th of December. You'll be able to check it out on your podcast app of choice. And the whole thing is about CM Punk. So I'm sure he's going to get into it more. But as you can imagine, now the internet is all like, oh my gosh, CM Punk is going to come back. Maybe he is, and maybe he's not. There's actually no way to know. And the other story I wanted to talk about today is when we jump across to WWE, because loads of people are now reporting that World Wrestling Entertainment would like to bring Tyson Fury, that's right, the boxing heavyweight champion of the world, not only in for Royal Rumble weekend, but also WrestleMania. So you'd have to presume he'd likely be a surprise in the Royal Rumble, which would lead to an angle at Mania, because WWE loves doing that. Although there is a slight issue 
may not be able to get in the country. So this one comes from a report in the US Sun mainly, and they say, so I'm just repeating words here, that Fury allegedly may or may not be banned from entering the United States due to the links he had to alleged Irish mob boss Daniel Kinnanen. Now, it's important to note that Tyson has come out and said, I just had my picture taken with him. I can have my picture taken with anyone in any room and I don't know what they're doing. And I ain't gonna have an opinion on this one because, you know, it enters legality areas that I don't want to muck around with. Although when I do think about it, obviously Tyson Fury had his big thing at Clash of the Castle where he punched Austin Theory right in the face. And I suppose if we can come up with it, something fun for him to do, this is totally cool. But what I don't want to happen, given that we're probably going to have a Logan Paul match, absolutely fine with it. We're probably going to have a Bad Bunny match, absolutely fine with it. I don't think Tyson Fury is going to be up to that level. No disrespect to that guy. You could argue maybe he'll be a bit of promo because he's, you know, his talking is kind of what he's known for as well as his pugilistic skills. But after we saw what he did with Braun Strowman back in the Saudi Arabia shows, this should be a little bit of fun. I don't think he needs to be in a proper match and I would just do something a little bit novel and a little bit gimmicky. I completely understand why you want to load WrestleMania up with mainstream stars. I mean, it just stands to reason, right? The more well-known celebrities you can have on the show, the more coverage you're going to get, the more headlines you're going to get, and the more numbers you're probably going to receive on the other side. Now, the Royal Rumble has already broken ticket sales records, I believe. So that's good, right? Because they can go, oh my gosh, we can have fun with the surprises. Whereas when it comes to WrestleMania, you can get your hammer and nail out and start putting some stuff together. So he is gonna be there, that's cool, but I hope it's in like a one, two percent, as opposed to like a 20%. But I don't really feel like I need to see Tyson Fury in another match. Fightful also had a report when it came to WWE and Vince McMahon, who of course has moved on to past this new, kinda but kinda not, and how he was against no cut contracts. Now you may have heard about this when all those cuts were happening, but some people, a la Randy Orton, allegedly, we don't know for sure, had negotiated no cut contracts, but actually Vince was against it. Now, I understand why you would report that in news, it makes all the sense in the world, but given the evidence that presents us right in the face, that one didn't surprise me at all. Clearly McMahon wanted to be able to fire anyone whenever he could, with no given notice and just say, I'm really sorry, here are your 90 days. But if you were wondering, for example, why when Kevin Owens resigned, he didn't get a no-cut deal, it's because Vince likely said he didn't want to put it in there. And maybe KO didn't care in the first place. It also begs the question how Triple H will approach this. And never forget that Paul Levesque, as he is known in the real world, used to be a grappler himself. So he probably has a mindset that understands wrestling, or the wrestler part of it, a little bit more than Vince, who was always the boss on top of all the bosses. So I think he probably would do this. Yeah, ultimately, I just want people to have jobs. This ties into the argument about, oh my gosh, the rosters are too deep, there's too many people on the roster. Doesn't mean there's not negative to that, which we're gonna talk about in just one second, but it also means that people have jobs. And if you get mad that an individual is employed, you need to get a real problem. And we shall finish off with Tony Khan, who did indeed do an interview with Grapsody, which you absolutely should go out of your way to check out, because it's super duper interesting. And he had a few choice quotes that are now flying around the internet. The first of which was when he was asked about the talent who aren't being used, who are deemed to be underutilized, and how they react to that. And well, he gave his answer. But again, he said this, there are dozens of wrestlers featured throughout Dynamite and Rampage every week. And throughout those hours, you see a lot of names, but there's also dozens of names in AEW you're not seeing every week. And sometimes they are silent about it. Sometimes there's a reason for that. Somebody's hurt. Somebody's working on a project. Somebody's being repackaged. Or frankly, there's just not enough slots for three hours. On other sports teams, you don't really see it as much. It's not really common in the NFL for the backup quarterback to blame the coach because he's not playing. It's not really common in the NBA for the backup point guard to blame the coach coach because he's not getting minutes. However, I take it and I take it with a smile and I'll keep taking it with a smile because it's okay. I understand everybody wants to wrestle and everybody wants to do things and everybody is coming from a different perspective. Now, I think that's definitely the right way to approach it. You cannot appease everybody if you are the manager. But I mean, if we compare that to the Premier League, there are absolutely backup strikers who throw their toys out the pram, Cristiano Ronaldo. <coughs> So I suppose it does happen all over the globe. And you're always going to be frustrated when certain wrestlers aren't used. I'm a massive Miro fan. Do I want him to be utilized more? Yes. But do I 100% know what's going on? No, I don't. So I just hope that all of a sudden he does pop up on my TV screen, but I don't get too mad about it. When he was doing this interview too, he was also asked about WCW and kind of, I'm paraphrasing here, could you ever see a scenario where AEW goes down like World Championship Wrestling? And Tony Khan said no, because never forget that was like a million paper cuts all at once. It wasn't just one big thing, it was little thing, little thing, little thing, little thing. And eventually there was just a bunch of red stuff over the floor, which I also do think is fair. He also referenced the finger poke of doom, when I remember the finger poke of doom, well, yep, 
that was definitely part of it. The biggest thing for me personally is that he did confirm that when we get to the new year, we are gonna get a brand new presentation for Dynamite and I presume Rampage as well. But he says this is gonna tie into more than just the look. Like the whole thing when you tune in is gonna be like, oh my gosh, it looks incredibly fresh. And I think that is damn exciting because I don't like comparing the two because people are gonna go crazy. But I would love it if Raw and SmackDown were kind of more individual to one another. I would love it if the pay-per-views, premium live events, also had that kind of a feel. So if AEW is gonna jump on that bandwagon, I am never going to mind this. Because they've been around, what now, three years, three or so years. You always wanna keep things up to date and you always wanna keep things exciting. And also, if they have come up with a no way to present the show to you, it may mean there's a bunch of audio and camera and who knows what else, little things that they'll also be able to throw out there that will make the show more interesting to watch. And that's how you have to reel people back in. The Rampage number did a great number compared to other ones from this last Friday night. And that's because we focused on the booking. So we keep focused on the booking and then we make all the aesthetic stuff like pleasing to your seeing devices. That is just gonna click and click and click. And given how people do react on the internet, yes, SmackDown absolutely smashed it as well, which is doubly amazing because that was for a tape show. And if you don't think this ties into John Cena and people anticipating John Cena and people wanting to see John Cena, well, that's okay. You're allowed not to know that, but I'm telling you, it's John Cena. And that's pretty much all I have to bring to you today. If you do want to get on the latest speculation wagon, Sasha Banks did a tweet uh, a few hours ago where she said something like, all my dreams have just come true. or My biggest dream has just come true. So who the hell knows what that means? We are getting to the end of December and early January, which means he's probably gonna pop up at Wrestle Kingdom in New Japan soon. So if you thought all the 2022 madness was insane, it's about to continue, even though a brand new will be here. I shall now give you a salute, and thank you very much for tuning in. Apologies for the editing, but you know, it is what it is. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding, so when other videos are going live, go to whatculture.com, where you can keep up to date with all the latest news. That's what we're doing here. We're also on social media, at WhatCultureWWE, and I personally at Simon316, if you want to give us a follow. And the videos have kept on going up over this holiday season. We would love it if you would watch one. My name is Simon from What Culture. Sorry for this, like, slapdash news video, but hey-ho, there's a lot to do with seeing family and doing festive stuff, but I like the fact the train continues. It's just continued in a rickety way. Make sure you have a lovely new year. I'll see you soon.